I wanted to ask you, what do you think has made you relevant for all these years? There's no such thing as a dumb question. Don't pretend you know, ask. Sometimes people want to replace. The moment you're trying to replace, eh, you're going to have a problem. Black travel has become a movement. People may be looking at me like, why are you here? <laughs> we are all connected. So join me as I talk to like minded people about topics that are appropriate to the current times we are living in. My name is Lerato Shabalala and this is Relevant. Hello everyone. Um, Welcome to another episode of Relevant with me, Lerato Shabalala. Today's guest, the last time I interviewed him was about six years ago. Since then, um, he has um, gotten married and it was his wife's birthday actually recently. Um, he, he has, um, he was like an MC, you know, some of you will remember Flex Boogie. He was like, he was the one, but now we are dealing with a wonderful man who is a black love advocate, who is also a therapist, who is also an African child, who is also one of the biggest gifts Allah has ever given us as uh, black people and black women. And he's really about protecting us. And we're actually here because of a tweet that he put up that made me go, and we'll get to the tweet in a second, that made me go, I gotta speak to this man. So without further ado, as they say, I wanna introduce you guys to a therapist and really one of the most phenomenal people I've I've ever had the pleasure to meet, uh, Mr. Hakeem Anderson Lusolang. Hakeem, how are you? Welcome. So much. What an intro! My God. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're good. We're good now. <laughs> listen, listen, Hakeem. We're gonna have this conversation. It's probably one of the most important conversations I've had on this podcast, and. Um, we are obviously going to talk about all the work that you do with uh, Batu, uh, Batu uh, therapies. But before we get to the tweet, and the t- tweet triggered me, I was triggered by the tweet, but we're going to get to that in a second. How did you end up being the person that you are? I mean, you've got like over 30,000 followers on uh, Twitter and literally you only follow your wife. Yeah. And yet all of us, uh, like we, every morning, we're like, we know Hakeem is going to say to God be the glory and amen indeed, you know. Um, How did you become a therapist? How did you get to finding this wonderful lane and this wonderful space of um, healing others? I think, well, first and foremost, I grew up in a family of healers. Like that's, you know, my grandfather was um, a traditional healer. Um, he, was, he was actually a herbalist um, and a traditional mm-hmm. healer. Um, grandfather, that's my grandfather on my mother's side. And then my, my grandfather on my father's side being a preacher. So I, I, I was mm-hmm. raised by very strong patriarchal men <laughs> who ran very strong matriarchal homes. You know what I mean? They had their wives lead. Um, so I come from that space. I come from that space of um, understanding people's value and seeing people's value. Um, and then you grow up, obviously, you grow up, uh, you know, you fit into um, the mold of what's cool and what's socially acceptable for a young black men. Um, and you not necessarily lose your way, you find your way. I think yes. black men, are heavily misunderstood. They finding their way. They letting. They transition. Black men are, are are in a beautiful transition right now. It just it just hurts that it hurts, and it hurts people that we shouldn't be hurting. 
Um, then you know became a became a musician. Became started started off with poetry, which has been my trade forever and a. Mm. Um, and then I was like, hey, uh, I, my poetry always has like a sing song thing that's going on there on stage. So why don't I just hook up with artists and make music? Then I started making music, and I started I was the I was the singer. And then I you know found I have the gift of the gap. So you know became <laughs> a rapper. You know the poetry thing obviously rhyme and reason. Uh, yeah. Became a rapper. Went back, uh, became an author, became a radio host, uh, still best performing artist in you know the Sadek region um, as Flex Boogie. Then I decided to kill Flex Boogie because he was becoming. You remember? A thief and I. What was what was what was wrong with Flex Boogie? He was such a vibe. <laughs> so it became, um, once I turned once I turned thirty. Mm -hmm. um, I started becoming very, very aware of the honor that your name carries. Right. Um, and I think, I think we briefly touched on it on our last interview, what your name is. The power that your name carries in the honor and the bloodline. Every man and woman who's ever met to, to result to me carry their names with honor. And I'm told mm -hmm. these stories um, constantly and consistently about names at home. Mm -hmm. And then once I turned 30, I then, I then I started wanting to be called by my name, right? I wanted to be, to be called by the name that gives me the purpose that I, that I know I have. Right. Um, at the time that I, I was starting to know and understand, oh, you're this person who can create these things, the flex boogies of the world, or the 200 truths about love, or the good morning ladies, so good, um, you know, to God be the glory, full heart, clear mind, open eyes, good morning, black love. I can create these things and, and it can have power to it. I need to, I need to honor my bloodline and I need to honor my mother's, my mother's need to name me what she named me. I need to honor the men and women who came before me and I need to honor the men and women that will come after me. Right. through my bloodline, through you know, my, my phallus, <laughs> through, <laughs> through my, my wife's womb. <laughs> uh, um, I need to honor that. And before, before anything is created, I'm going to first place this name, Abdul Hakim, Hakim Anderson, Hakim Anderson, I'm going to place it in the fore of everything. So when you hear the name, it rings supreme with something that means more to me than anything in the world. And that is black love. And that is the honor of black women. And so, so yeah, I, then, then I did that when I was 30. And ever since then, I've been saying to God be the day, full heart, clear mind, open eye. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> good morning, black love. I've just been saying those three things every day consistently. They're affirmations, they're my mantras. They are literally uh, becoming a, a cultural thing now, like on, on, on my Twitter. Why I don't follow anyone, I've always said, I, I will let God influence me to say the things I need to say, to be the person I need to become, to mm -hmm. influence the change that I need to see in the world, to help people become what they need to become. And the only person who's going to be followed is the person who influences me after God. And mm -hmm. that just happens to be my wife. Oh, yeah. I mean, Hakeem, you better That's quit with the bars. We just started. <laughs> the interview just started, please. <laughs> Abego, sure, that is amazing. You know, when we first had our discussion, it was about your book, The 200 Truths About Love. And I think it was almost like the gestation of the man you have become and are becoming. And it was a real honor for me to chat to you at that time. I mean, you are a certified NLP um, therapist. And I, before, I mean, I'm gonna, there's so much I want to talk to you about, but I, um, realized um, that there is a stigma with black men in therapy. And I have gone for therapy myself because as one of the things you, you teach and one of the things you advocate is our traumas, our past traumas. And I was in a relationship that was making me realize that I actually needed to do some internal interrogation. And I realized, okay, one of the things I also need to do is I would like him to join me in this journey. If we are going to, you know, be a, a union. And one of the things he said to me, uh, this 
person was, we don't need a referee. I don't know why you're suggesting that we go to therapy. We don't need a referee. And the I never forgot it because a referee um, for me <laughs> is such a negative connotation to something so absolutely positive. And so I wanna ask you, what is it with uh, black men where there is a, just a uh, block of understanding in terms of therapy and what it can do. What is that? What's that about? Um, it's, it's, it's funny, I was, I was just talking about that um, just now when I was coming in. It is, it is fear. It's fear. It's fear of what we don't know. It's fear of finding out what we don't know about ourselves and it's the fear of not knowing what to do with what we find out right. after we find out right it is the it is the fear that once that once i step into the therapist's office and i'm supposed to be vulnerable in a, in a therapist's office i am now going to find out that i'm not who i think i am mm. i am the sum total of all the trauma that i've experienced what do i do with Mm. Right. This whole week, last week, I was asking women who want for men to be the better they imagine men can become. To, okay, you tell me, tell me what you want me to become. But after you tell me what you want me to become and pointing out all the things that I'm doing that are a mess, show me how. Right. Because I'm also trying to figure it out. Says right. I'm also I'm also figuring it out. But if you have a better process for me to get things done the right way, the way in, in a way that you know balances the scale in life for you as a woman, for us in the society, for our children, for our communities, show me how. You don't have to teach me how, you don't have to hold my hand after you show me how. Show me how, show me the blueprint, show me an example of a man that's doing it. Open the door for me to go talk to this person. Give me the communities that are actually, you know what I mean? Once you do that, you don't have any responsibility towards me, right? We, we keep throwing men in, in this deep ditch and we tell them the grass is greener on that side, but we don't show them how. We don't show them how. We tell them the grass is green on that side and you can make your grass green here. It can be green. Let's go to therapy. Your grass will be green. A lot of times when we talk about going to therapy, we don't want to go back to therapy. Men listen. Men listen to that. Men listen to the after effect because if you went there and you're not happy, I'm going to be more unhappy than I am right now. Right. So I'm going to hold on to what you know because what we both don't know is going to mess us up. I don't want to mess us up. I can manage the mess that's happening right now. I can manage it. Yes, it's going out of sync and going out of line, but I can manage it. Do you understand? And men are managing their fear of new. They fear different. They fear of what they don't know, right? We're telling, we're telling people to heal, but healing is different for everyone. Right? Healing is different for everyone. Healing is very different from everyone. And it's a different journey for everyone. And everyone has to come to a point where they say, you know what? I'm ready. I'm tired of doing the same thing every day, every time, hoping for a different results. We can't force people. You can take the holes to the water. Cliche, but it rings true every single time. You yeah. cannot make that horse drink. Yeah. You can't make it drink. But you can make the water look good, though. You can make the water look appetizing. You can make the water look like the dopest water ever to be drank by anyone in life. The water you've been drinking ain't nothing, bro. You need to drink, the, take a sip of this. Take <laughs> yeah. a sip of this. You know, um, yeah. um, uh, uh, just yesterday, so I'm, I'm constantly in these conversations. And people are like, yesterday the question was, um, how do I change my habits? I'm like, what's the prep work before deciding to change the habits? Right? Have you changed your lifestyle? Have you altered it to allow for the newness? Have you like gotten rid of the friends that influence the habit? Have you uh, stopped watching the te television shows that influence the habit that make the habit become a norm? Have you uh, stopped? Have you stopped buying cigarettes? Have you stopped um, consuming 
<laughs> pork or meat as, as a whole? Have you started tasting the new different foods that are vegan and are healthy? Or you know what I mean? Have you, have you done a little bit of legwork to allow for the inspiration to come for your decision to stick? Yeah. Or did you just decide to go cold turkey? Because I can tell you this, the mind is always going to go to what it knows, right? So what kind of conversations are we having with men when it comes to therapy? What kind of proofs are we showing them that therapy actually does work? What kind of results are we giving them? Because the process looks like crap. When you're looking at a person who's going to therapy, it looks like a mess. This person is leaving what they know, going to what they don't know, hoping that what they don't know is better. And in the process, it's messy. Are you telling me I need to get rid of what I know that I can manage really well? How, sis? How? Mm, mm. Do you know what I mean? Unfortunately, for us as Black people, we don't have communities of healed people. We have communities of people that are, are hurting and that are traumatized and communities that are in the process of healing. They're on their journey. So until men live off results, guys, Men function off results. You tell a man, I have a headache. I right, cool, I'm gonna drive to the pharmacy right now, get you those panados because the last time they were, he's a fixer. Yeah. He's a fixer, right? He's a fixer because he knows the panado worked the last time. I can depend on it. I can manage the situation. Have your headache, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I'll be back with the pills. Here's water, drink. Five yeah. minutes later, your headache is fixed. So what have we what have we done to prepare men? to be more accommodating of these conversations with therapy. Because we just tell men, oh, you're broken, heal. You're broken, heal. Oh, we need to heal. What does healing look like? It's a mess, guys. It's a mess. And we make it look like the people that are actually going to therapy, we make it look like such a mess. Therapy is <laughs> fun for us. It's not like, you know, you're not supposed to go to the therapist. You're like, oh my God. <laughs> oh gosh you know this is so illuminating for me Hakeem because I never you know Oprah says one of her favorite things is when people say I never saw it that way and I never ever saw it in such a way that it was he was managing his fear he was managing his fear and that's that's okay like I get it now I didn't get it at the time but now I get it that you would rather deal with the thing that you know than actually go into a space of uncertainty that might break the thing that is certain to you right now. Which then for me is a segue into something that a lot of women, I'm gonna say this, but I know it's gonna be uncomfortable for women to hear it but I'm gonna say it because I speak for myself. And so this is a truth that I speak for myself and other women like me. And so the question is, Hakeem, why do we like, you, you, you called it in one of your tweets projects. Why do we like, <laughs> why do we like saving? So men are fixers, right? Which is what we've spoken about now. Men like to fix things. They like to problem solve, solve and we are martyrs. Um, we like a project, we like potential, we like uh, somebody that we can um, help. And where does that come from? Why, what is this deep need for us to save people, in particular, the men in our lives, the men that we love? Um, it is... You know, like prior to doing therapy, it used to be a joke, but this goes back to the, the previous question and, and its answer. We manage what we know. Mm. We manage what we know. We handle what we know. We go for what we know. We attract what we know, right? We attract what we are actually, and we attract what we know. Mm. So every person, has to, every person, man or woman, has to do inner child healing. They have to do age regression therapy. Um, call me. You got to call me for that. You right? Really every single person has to do age so regression please, therapy because a lot of things that are showing right now, depression, anxiety, anger issues, um, you know, feeling small, feeling like you're not enough, inadequacy, feeling like the world is rejecting you or your world is rejecting you. All of this comes from when you were a child. 
It comes from the house you were raised in. It comes from the community you were raised in. It comes from the school you went to and the teachers that taught you. It comes from your childhood. All these blocks that you're experiencing right now come from your childhood. But guess what you did? If it comes from your house, you started learning, oh, Papa does this, or Mama does this. When they do this, I can manage it this way. Men are like this. So when they do this, I can manage it this way. Oh, he's got potential. He looks great. He looks, oh, I, I recognize this. My trauma recognizes your trauma. Trauma bonding, relationship with trauma bonding, and then codependency, right? Because you've been going back to a family where that codependency started to live. You've been going back to those relationships. Your primary relationships look like the covered relationships you have right now in your friends, in your work, in your lovers. We can manage what we know. Hakeem. But right now, we grown up, yeah. right? Right now, we're grown ups. I can manage what I know, but I'm a grown up. So now I've got a green card to leave whatever situation doesn't work for my management. If my management fails, I am leaving. Bye. Deuces, peace, but you didn't solve it. Exactly. You didn't solve it. You know what you're going to go back to? You're going to go back to the same situation that looks a little bit cleaner. Exactly. Exactly. A little bit more manageable. Your inner child isn't healed. Your inner child, you're still responding from the pain and the bruised ego of that hurt child. Mm -hmm. You're still responding from that. All your responses are the same responses you've been giving in school. Oh. Or your reaction. Your reactions are the same way. They just, they've got more muscle now and they've got more like performative assertiveness, right? They've got performative assertiveness because I have to be strong and I have to be, you know, outspoken. I have to speak my voice because when I grew up, I couldn't speak my voice and no one heard me. So you're going to hear me now. Trauma response. No, sure. I mean... The whole thing about trauma bonding. Yeah, I mean, I think all kind of like, I wanted to scream and shout. And I'm sure like people watching this, like are gonna have the same reaction because Hakeem, so few of us understand we're bonding with people because of our trauma. Oh, oh, I, I've seen this before. Oh, I know how to react to this. Oh my God, yes, this is what I'll do. And, and, I know it's going to be triggering, but let me tell you the tweet because it's related. So, Haki, in this year in February, um, on Magus' birthday, on the 4th of Feb, you posted something on Twitter that triggered the hell out of me. Um, you said, looking at the men you've kept, do you love yourself? And I was triggered to the max. I was like, <laughs> Why are you attacking me? <laughs> why are we? At, why are you attacking all of us? And I, it was so funny because I was not the only one. When you look at the thread, everybody's like, "But who? <laughs> why?" And I think it was triggering for me because um, I had always thought I knew I was uh, I I've had serious codependency issues, right? And um, I uh, am a people pleaser. And so as a result, I've always attracted narcissists, right? And uh, recently you said uh, narcissists rewrite history to escape uh, accountability. And when, uh, you know, because I've been doing all this sort of therapy work and I understand now that um, narcissists and people please us the same end of the spectrum. It's just, it shows itself differently. It's your childhood trauma. One person says, it's all about me. And another person says, well, I want people to like me. I, both of those things are about controlling people. And I realized, oh, I don't love myself. <laughs> you know, that's such a hard thing to, to get yeah. to. So why, what do the men in our lives, why is it important to assess the kind of men you attract in order to understand how you feel about yourself because I understood what you were saying that, that the two were related. My self worth was related to who I was attracting. Yeah, um, you know, you know what? I think more than anything, it's not even about the person you attract. It's about 
who you're comfortable with accommodating in your life. Oh. It's who you're comfortable accommodating in your life because the, that comfort, that comfort says, I will allow what I can manage, right? I will allow what I can manage in my life. Going back to the first two questions, I will allow what I can manage in my life because I, it's happened to me before. I've seen instances where this happens. I've seen, I've seen instances where men like this exist. And, you know, like if I'm attracted to that and they attracted to me and, you know, the store is open for them to walk in, I can manage that, right? Um, but what we really need to look at ourselves is, is the management really helping and is it taking us to the places we want to go? Is it building, is, are we able to build healthy relationships and healthy relations? And what does that look like? We need to start defining what a healthy relationship looks like. But before, we, for that, to, for the design to even start showing any, any shape in our lives, we, we need to do the work in ourselves, the self-correction, right? So you need to take an audit, like a personal audit of all the relationships that you've been in and all the things that you've allowed, because nothing would have happened to you in normal things, not the, not the extreme things like abuse, physical, sexual, emotional, right. the things that you've allowed in Life, that, have, that you know you you're the one that allowed this person to walk in your life you're the one that educated them on how to treat you you're the one that um that permitted this type of behavior to persist you didn't call it out you said oh no they'll, they'll check themselves or their people will check them or they'll you know they're responsible they you know this is and this is what happens when you fall in love with potential this is what happens when you fall in love with almost this is what happens when you fall in love with i can manage this fear I can manage this reality, right? This is what happens when you fall in love with it, when you hope it doesn't hurt you, when you hope it doesn't, it doesn't mess itself up, when you hope you'll be the best version of yourself and you hope because you know you don't have the capacity, capability, energy, resources, skills, tenacity, and the management um, acumen to actually make this work for you. We need to interrogate for ourselves in our lives, what is it that we are comfortable with? And if what we're comfortable with isn't working for us, hasn't been working for us, isn't what's going to work for building that future that we want, stop. Stop. Don't even be interested in nobody. Don't even be interested in that relationship. Don't even be interested in sharing yourself with someone because what are you sharing with them exactly? Accept the fear. Right. Accept the inadequacy. Accept the hope. South Africa has been selling us hope for 25 years. Oh, We're going down the drain, functioning off of hope. Functioning off of maybe this time it'll be different. Mm -hmm. And that's this time it'll be different, hoping maybe it will be different, is an abusive response. It's, it's, it's a trauma response, right. right? So we need to be very careful what we give ourselves to and how we are when we give ourselves to those things. So when you open the door to that relationship, are you truly healed of your trauma? Are you still responding from the same things you were responding uh, from in your first relationship? at your home? Are you still responding the same way you were responding? Are you still reacting the same way? Are you still a pizza? Right? Mm -hmm. It's not hard to catch yourself doing these things. You know them. You know what it feels like. This, your, your diaphragm, this is like muscle here, this diaphragm, right? This like underneath this diaphragm is your gut. It always tells you when you're not comfortable. Right. It always tells you when you're feeling unsafe. It always tells you when you're not satisfied. It always tells you when you're not fulfilled it always tells you you're lying to yourself for this happiness but we choose to mute it why are you choosing to mute it when this thing this god this god nudge this hey hey move from here when i stop mm -hmm. say something mm -hmm. do something move something shake something you know what i mean why are we muting it why why do you have an incessant need to quiet yourself down to quiet this inner child by screaming you're going in the same direction and you're going to crash. Wow. You know what I mean? So, so we need to, instead of looking at, um, um, and I'm cautioning people now, right? Like I'm cautioning when, when it comes to relationships and healthy relationships, because I only advocate for healthy marriage. That's the only thing I advocate for. Um, Jolo, get fat and said. I don't do fat and said. I don't advocate for fat and said. I don't advocate for playing house. I don't. I advocate for building an actual house and yeah. managing that house with a healthy partner who's for building a house. So 
now we get to the juice. Yes. In building the house, you have to be built. You have to have the skills and the knowledge on what needs to be built and how it needs to be built and why it needs to be built. You can only have this clarity when you're clear about yourself, when you've done the work on yourself, when you've healed your inner child, when you're no longer functioning at the fear that the past is going to re re repeat itself, when you can trust yourself so much that you will stand if anything happens, even if they chop off your foot, you will be able to run because you're using this to lead instead of using this to lead. You're using the primary and not the secondary, right? Mm -hmm. The primary is the origin of thought. What are the thoughts that you're thinking? Are they negative? Are they fearful? Are they doubtful? Right. Are they self-deprecating? Are they breaking you? Or are they building you? And are they encouraging you? And are they you know, egging you on to be the best version of yourself than you were yesterday, an hour ago? Right? Are they, are they telling you, no, you need to improve on this. So we're going to focus on improving on this. And this is what you do for the next few months to make this habit stick and make it ritualistic. It's religious now. I am great at this. I'm great with money. I can, I can you know, I can multiply money. Give me money. When I, give me money. Me, I'll multiply the money. You will see, right. we'll multiply. And I have a proven track record that I can multiply the money. This is my skill. This is my tenacity. This is what I do. I'm not good at communicating, great. I have family members that I can talk to every day and learn how to communicate. I can learn how to keep quiet because 95% uh, of a great conversation is listening yes. so you can respond appropriately, yes. right? And you respond to the things that deserve a response and don't deserve a reaction. And if you're reacting when you're having conversations, you need to fix that. What are you reacting from? Right. What are you reacting for? Yeah. You need to fix these things. You see, you see how I told you, we always tell people, you got a problem and never tell you the how, this is the how. Yeah. Check yourself because yeah. you've been wrecking yourself, yeah. right? And check yourself. Your relationships failed because of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Make the list for three months. Focus on one thing on that list. For the next three months, focus on the next thing on that list. And you'll find if I focus on this thing and I master it, it eliminates two things. Because this one thing that I'm doing required for me to do the extra two in concurrently, right? And now I'm fixing three things at the same time just by focusing on one thing. I'm not a good communicator. Okay, being part of being a good communicator, part of communicating really well, part of have, holding great conversations, you learn how to mediate. You learn how to mitigate. You learn how to manage. Right? You learn these things. When you become a good communicator, your family's there, your sisters are there, your brothers are there. Have a great relationship with these people because they know you better than you know yourself. But they're now learning to know a person who's improving. Yo, says, I really want to improve on how I communicate. So I'm going to be texting you every day from now. Whether you respond or not, I'm going to text you every day, at least five times a day. I don't care if you respond to everything. I'm going to text you because I want to text you and I love you, right? So I'm a, there's no obligation from you to respond, no need for you to, but I'm going to text you. I'm going to text you, good morning, how are you doing? And I want to find out about the kids. I'm going to call you and video call you so I can chat to them. If you're having a problem, please call me so we can talk about it. I'm reading this new book that's informing me on how to resolve conflict. You know what I mean? Read as well. In that period, read. Read books that help. There's, there's, no, there's no problem that you have in life that doesn't have a book to solve. Mm -hmm. None. There is no problem in life that doesn't have a book to solve it and make you an incredible person. You know what I mean? Because you can start charging after solving a few things. <laughs> you can start charging people to help them out. You know, that's an incentive for you to actually get to learn something new, right? Put yourself in very uncomfortable positions just to get rid of the weak points and the blind spots, right? That's the how-to. That's how. And once you do that, you're going to start noticing the people around you start changing. The mm. people around you start behaving differently. The people around you start treating you differently because you're reacting and responding from a place of healing and knowledge, self-knowledge, right? And self-knowledge always comes with self-love. Like, I'm not going to give you the satisfaction of the same old responses and reactions that I've been giving you. I am going to walk away because you're not worth that energy anymore. 
because that energy keeps me spiraling down. When I go home, I'm wrecking my brain as to why you get under my skin so much. So better response, I'm gonna walk away, right? I'm gonna walk away, I'm gonna change the subject. I'm going to tell you, this is the new boundary. This is the new boundary. Boundaries, I'm not fighting with you. I'm just telling you what I will not tolerate in my life any longer. Mm -hmm. Because when you do this, I feel like this. And I care about what I feel. Because what I feel influences my choices. My choices influence my actions. My actions have results and feedback. And that's what I ruminate over a million times worse. So mm -hmm. I want to ruminate over the things that I do a million times better. So this response that you used to, you're not going to get it anymore. This fight is yours because what you're doing has absolutely nothing to do with me. Those are not my demons. Those are not, that's not my trauma. No. I'm done playing this game. Mm -mm. I'm done, I'm done playing, I'm done being a victim to your pain. Mm. I'm done. So I'm gonna walk away and I'm not going to deal with that. I'm gonna walk away from anything. I'm walking away from all the troubles in my life. There we I'm go. Walking away because, because he's not saying these are my troubles. They are troubles in my life. Mm. Do you understand? They're troubles in my, they're not me. They're not part of my identity. They have nothing to do with me. And everything that has every, anything to do with me that is wrong with me, I can fix that. So the time and the energy that I used to dedicate to responding and reacting to you in a harsh manner or in a manner that satisfies whatever it is you need to satisfy, I'm going to take that, convert that energy and focus on building myself me because i'm the only me that exists and if god wakes me up in the morning that's enough validation that that's enough validation for me to know that he chooses me for the betterment of this life yeah. and everything that i touch is dependent on this thing that has been validated by my creator he wakes me up do you know how many people are dying right now taking their last breath right now and you and i are still here Mm -hmm. So if I'm not going to be the best version of myself right now, if I'm not going to make this moment ultra magical for everyone that's experiencing me, I'm doing the validation and injustice. Exactly. I'm stripping away and taking and robbing myself of the thing that he gives me every time. The thing that, the thing that I use to look for in people, this validation for me to live and to be my excellence and to be my greatness and for me to feel whole and good and wholesome and amazing and great. I used to seek it in other people. I seek it in myself now because I've been woken up for the purpose of living my greatest life. I'm going to do it with every single ounce in me. Amen. I'm going to do it. Amen. You know what I mean? And when you do that, your environment changes. Healed energy heals the energy around you. Mm. Mm. Your energy starts changing so much from inside. It's, it has nothing to do with the men you've been attracting. It has everything to do with, do you love yourself? Mm -hmm. Do you love you? Because if you loved you, they wouldn't exist. Those experiences wouldn't be your reality. Mm -hmm. Those experiences wouldn't be the data you reference when you fear loving someone. Yep. Do you understand? They yeah. wouldn't be there if you truly, really loved yourself. And loving yourself requires for you to be uncomfortable with the things you used to be uncomfortable with. I'm not comfortable chilling with someone that's happy being broke. I'm not comfortable with that. I'm not comfortable with a person who's happy doing bare minimum and saying that they deserve the best in life. I'm not comfortable with that. I'm not comfortable with being around a person that doesn't inspire me to be the greatest version of myself every single moment and to aspire to be with people that are their greatest version of themselves every single moment. This energy is too important to this life, to this reality, to everyone that knows it. It's way too, with this story that I'm creating every day is way important to 10, 20, 50 generations from now, that when they look back, they reference to it and say, this is the how-to, this is the blueprint that men have been looking forward to, that women have been looking forward to, that God regard has been about all along. If I do you the disservice of existing in your life for 20 minutes and you do not know your worth just by listening to me or just being in my energy vortex, this healed energy vortex, I've done you the most indecent disservice in the entire world. Right. When you love yourself, you prefer goodness for yourself. 
And it's going to be very easy for you, third day after talking to someone where you see glitches in their matrix, to say, I wish you the best in the entire world, but you're not my portion. You're not my portion. Not, like, not my portion. You have, I promise you that you have someone that is so incredible waiting for you. Mm -hmm. And I pray that when you reach them, you are your hundred with them. Yes. I pray that for you. But for me, I'm good. And this is what I did for six years in a row. Saying no to myself in relationships that could have catapulted me into the, you know, the greatest avenues of my life. But they were not a good fit for me and the future mm -hmm. that I want for myself and those 10, 20, 50 generations from now. They weren't good for that. They weren't good. I was going to survive myself and my lack in those relationships and break people. And those people were further going to break me. But I knew what I was worth. So I kept saying, no, no, no. And I slipped up and I said, yes. And then it was, ah, no. You know what I mean? You're, you're, going to, you're going to get so comfortable with hearing no. And then asking, why are you saying no? And they tell you, because of one, two, three, that's happening in your life. And then you look at it and you're like, is there evidence to this one, two, three that they pointed at? If there's evidence, you have a, you have a project to work on. You have you to work on. Exactly. And, and you, you start working on that. Project, right? I think you are your own project. But I want to I wanna talk about something that you were like, now we're getting to the juice. And I see mm. that tweet also. It's another tweet about Ifa Tenset. Now, when I wrote the, the way I see it, I wrote about situationships, right? And I myself, because I'm codependent, have found myself in situationships. And I want us to talk about situationships and fuck by these because we um, have come to justify it to ourselves. And look, there's nothing wrong. We're adults. Do you think? Nobody's saying, I'm not saying don't. But one of the things I realized why I got in, why so many women get into situationships like him is because we think rather something than nothing, right? Rather, instead of being a spinster, let me get a quarter of Hakeem, even though it's not fully what I want. And then we end up, and those are personal transgressions, right? You do that to yourself. And um, then we end up, situationships can graduate to fat and scent, but you know, it never really grows into what you're talking about building. What's the trap with us in uh, situationships? It, to an extent, I understand fuck buddies because even though that can be complicated because you start with no emotions, then the emotions, then it's complicated. But situationships are just something on their own. W what is it in the modern world that makes us prefer this no man's land of relationships, if you call it that, even? Impatience. It's, it's that simple. <laughs> very impatient. Yeah. We love, we love instant gratification. And so we're impatient with the process of attracting the right partner. We don't even, like, like I said earlier, we don't even put ourselves in conversation with men or women that are good for our future. Because we don't believe we are worth it. And we're impatient to work on the things that make us worth it. We're very impatient with ourselves. Like you, like you, you said a word, spinster, right? Um, <laughs> to every woman that's listening to this, says you can work your ass off and freeze your eggs and be pregnant at 45. Yeah. Shush. You can freeze your eggs. You can, you can take time to really focus on working on yourself, being in the right type of company that knows you and respects your healing and your energy and the goodness that you want in life. Enough to help you attract exactly what you want. You can be patient with yourself. You can learn and unlearn what you need to unlearn. You can unwire from what you need to unwire from. You can let go of the things you're super comfortable with that land you in situations. We, it's not like we don't know what situationships 
relationships, um, Fatin said the plague house leads to. We've got all the evidence in the world that these things hardly work in attempting marriage. And they hardly work in attempting marriage because they're not a qualifier for marriage. Marriage is a qualifier for marriage. So if you want a healthy relationship and a marriage, a stable marriage, a, a, a good marriage with a good partner, become the good partner who only signs up for marriage, right? Who only signs up for marriage. And the best thing to do there is to court. So if you're talking to someone, don't give yourself to this one person. Do not give yourself to this person. Don't pour anything and everything that you have on this person. It's just conversation. I want to find out about who you are. But while I'm finding out about who you are, I'm talking to five other people to see who they are. And be very clear with it. Be very clear about that. Like five to seven people at the same time where you're talking to them. I know it sounds exhausting and you've done this before and you've, but you haven't done it this way. Mm. You haven't done it this way. You, the purpose for talking to these people is to see if they are candidates, if they're the right candidates for marriage, if they're the right partners and spouses, if they fit, if they fit in that bracket of what you want to have, which is marriage. How do you want your marriage to be? Who are you as a wife? Who are you as a husband? Who are you as a man, as a dad, as a mom? You know what I mean? What kind of family do you have? What morals and morals do you have? What values and, and principles and systems do you have in place in your life right now that's going to make that institution successful? Because right. you don't think about these things when you think about a relationship. You know, you're not thinking about this. You're saying, I hope mm -hmm. it works out. I hope. Won't get you anything, guys. Stop. It won't get you anything. Hope will get you instant gratification. But your hope is not a strategy. <laughs> but your hope get is not you, a strategy. <laughs> you know, like, like be, you need to be very, very, very strategic and calculating about what you want. We right. go for the right types of jobs. We go for the right types of holidays. And we plan for these things. We change our lives for these things. But the one thing that actually really matters to us, the anchoring, the foundation, the beginning of the day and the end of the day, who you are with in those moments, we don't plan for these things. And why don't we plan for these things? Have you gone for a psych evaluation that's, you know, that's going to deem you ready <laughs> for an actual marriage? Have you ever spoken to what, how many people who are married are in your circle? Or is your circle filled with people that are heartbroken and single and are afraid of love and afraid of being loved and afraid of loving? You know what I mean? The conversations you're having, are they influencing of the right type of life for you? The right type of environment that's going to give you a base for you to build this love that you want, this, this relationship in marriage that you want? Are you dating just to date because you're bored? Are you dating to pass the time because you're tired of working on yourself? Are you dating because you crave sex and you haven't really asked why? In your obsession with love languages, have you questioned whether those are trauma responses or not? Are they really love languages or are they trauma responses? Are you, are you a, a sucker? for gifts because you were you never got gifts and your cousins got gifts every now and then and you were the only one that was there on the wayside are you a sucker for um you know affection because your mom and dad went affectionate with you and you saw the cosby show and the father and the mom was super affectionate with the with their children and you craved for that but you couldn't ask for it because the amount the, the time you went to your mom and you hugged her late, she was stressed and depressed and she you know she didn't feel touched or she she got sexually assaulted and she couldn't even tell anyone in the family so anyone touching her felt like a violation to her so she reacted really badly and it hit you in such an impactful way that you felt like your mom doesn't love you so the way you want love is you want physical affection the exactly. one thing that you missed as and you're like, I'll be damned. That's what I'm going to get. Like, I'll be damned no matter what. I am going to get somebody who holds my hand, who kisses me, who because that is what I'm yeah. craving, right? Right? And I think that's in, such a good point. In, in your cravings and in your not caring about the person who actually does this for you, the partner who does this for you, with you, by you, to you, you don't care so much that you're willing to sacrifice 
but they are comfortable. Exactly, exactly. You're willing to put them on the chopping block exactly. and end the relationship if you do not get what you want. You don't even want to understand the fact that they feel weird because they also traumatize. And that's the thing. I feel like if we understood our traumas, it, you know what I mean? The, 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 the journey to healing, um, because yeah. really healing is about loving yourself. But before I let you go, Hakeem, I want to ask you, for people watching us who want to get in touch with you, who are just like, yeah. I, 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 I love the podcast. I'm going to subscribe. I'm going to share it with my friends. But I really want to start healing, and I don't know how. How do they get a a hold of you and how do they get your services because you are a healer i have this platform because i believe in personal healing and i love speaking to healers because i believe we're creators so how do people get in touch with you how do people say help me hakeem help me help myself <laughs> so um, i'm gonna i'm gonna keep this under one minute right yeah um all my links all the links in my bio, um, you can you can get in touch with me on all my links in my bio. Right. Um, you can book a discovery call to see if we're the right fit. Um, you can book a session directly and pay for it and actually do a client intake form immediately right there on um, on, our, on our bios uh, on the links in our bios. Um, every session is an hour long. Every session is going to cost you two point two plus some change uh, because SARS is real and we have to you know pay people. Uh, Hallelujah. <laughs> After, after every session, you're going to have exercises that you do because I want you to see that you're actually paying for results and not just paying to talk to someone. Um, every session looks like this. Talk therapy, first 30 minutes. The next 30 minutes is regression. Regression is the relaxation of the mind, the body, the heart. This is, I'm actually doing the discovery call right now. I'm telling you what you have in the package. The mind, the body, the heart, and you relax everything so you can have access to your subconscious mind. That's where the changing happens. That's where the reconciliation happens. That's where, um, you know, accepting what has happened, has happened, and I didn't have the power to change it, but now I do. Now I'm not going to carry those burdens. That's where it happens. Um, what we talk about is private. So we have, we have that confidentiality running for you. We are, we are looking at doing this in 20 sessions next, right? to handle all the relationships. In the first 10 sessions, we're going into every single relationship that you have. The relationship with your parents, the relationship with your student, the relationship with the house you're raised in, the relationship with the house you're living in, this body that you have, the relationship with relationships and past and what they've done to you, your relationship with sex, the relationship with money, the relationship with work, the relationship with productivity, and your relationship with food, right? All of these, happen every day in your life and they have a deep impact on you so we're going to sort them out the rest of the 10 sessions are going to be optimizing you for the future you actually want right so we deal with the past first and then we deal with the future you actually want and optimize you into that people say they're not confident one hour with me you'll be the most confident person <laughs> in the entire world mm -hmm. so that's how you get a hold of me go to batuwatu.com um you can see all our packages there um, my books, 200 Truths About Love, and In Rosewater are coming out. So by the time you guys see this, we will have the copies and you can buy them, link in bio. They're both coming out. And um, yeah, I have, uh, I'm working on my podcast, Sincerely Black Love. More episodes are coming. We're working on uh, another you know, TV show called Cheetah. You can find me there where we actually talk about men's issues. Real talk this time around, no fluff, no, uh, no jokes. No banter. Well, there is banter because I'm me and we're working on those. But you can talk to me in my DMs, jump in my DMs, go to the links in my bios, um, and you can find me at Hakeem, A N D R S N, on all my social medias. And yeah, let me provoke your thinking. Let me provoke the way you feel so you can actually heal. Thank you so much, Hakeem. You're amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.